Okay, back to um, Black Dyke again. Wind pretty much howling at the moment, probably isn't coming across as windy. And for the first time ever, it's actually coming from that direction. So, and this is my favorite little corner to fish. I'm gonna fish from the bank um, today. Um, and this, this area has always done very well for me. So I'm gonna give that a go. And I've got the girls back. Are you gonna be YouTube sensations? Are ya? Mm. Nothing to eat, hey? But you nosy. Right, let's get to it. Quite a nip in the air today, again, like last week. Uh, not quite as cold, but certainly not, not warm. It is due to rain off and on throughout today, so might have to take shelter in the car, we'll see. Right. Do the 22 pound. Three fish, six hours today. Or should I do the 20 pound? Two fish, four hours. Don't know how long I'll be able to put up this because I know it might not look it, but it, it is windy and it is cold. Ah, uh, God, 22 quid. Don't be a tight ass, sorry. Okay, I'm going to start with my sink tip. Got an apps on the point. And leading down to, I've got a red buzzer. Red buzzer there, I'm not sure if that's showing up. Let's pop it on my hand, a little red buzzer. And a further sort of five foot up the line. And I've got a little black buzzer. And we'll see how they go. Right, first cast. Very often get a fish on my first cast, so let's see if I can do that this time around. Also, let's see if I can cast without getting a horrendous tangle because the wind is not good but having said that it is coming from just the right direction for me to fish this corner as i said before i like this corner a lot okay cast and we didn't catch one. That's disappointing. I'll be fishing here throughout the whole of this year, through through the whole summer and whatever. I just want to try all the different seasons here. Um, but when restrictions allow, I will definitely get back over to Grafham. I want to really get to understand that a bit better. Um, only boat fishing that's all that interests me at Grafham I just uh, I like to be able to cover huge areas of water that you can with that and it's so simple got a few people that I've been talking to recently who've said they quite fancy coming out and having a go in the boat with me haven't tried it before so hopefully uh, it won't just be me on my own It'll be someone else fishing with me be quite nice I have no issues fishing on my own, but it's always enjoyable when you've got someone else and they're catching. A bit of conversation. So I just chat to myself as I do all day. All these videos. Great excuse really to talk to yourself when you're filming these. You can try and make out that you're not stark staring mad because you're doing it for a reason even if you're stark staring mad which some would say I am I think some would say just coming out here and standing in what is a, a stupidly cold wind Shooting the fish aren't that bothered by F15s because they, they, they're certainly exposed to them, I think, pretty much every day of the week. OK, 
okay so I've come out to the pontoon now which means I can get out towards that um, aeration pump let's see if that helps She had a take and I missed it. That's my first actual take. Hooray! There's a fish in there that wants something that I've got on my line. Bugger! That can be a problem when you've had an hour, hour and a half, which I think I have now, without anything. When you do then finally get that take, it's so easy just to uh, not get ready for it. That's a bugger. Oh, second cast, that's brilliant. Fan flipping tastic. <laughs> Hour and a half, nothing. Two casts, two takes. Probably the same fish, but who knows. And at the moment, I'm just, oh no, no, no. I was going to say, I'm just happy to have a fish. Oh well. <clears throat> nice to get that. Buzz, that adrenaline hit that you get. Hopefully there's a whole bunch of them out there and they're just um just waiting to chomp onto that. So nothing for an hour and a half, two cars, two takes. Let's see if we can go for three takes in three cars. Oh we're in. Good good good. Only a little fish. Keep it on this time. Nice to see what it's taken off. I think it's taken off. <clears throat> Might actually get to do a catch and cook. That's what I intend to do. So if I bring one into the net. I'll show you how I fillet them and then shallow fry them. It works pretty well. I was taking on the apps. At last. I say at last. I took on an apps blood worm. And I've had four hits in about the last eight casts, so... Well, yeah. So I've got a beaded shrimp on point, and then the next fly up I've got a blood worm. But, yeah, I've had quite a few hits now, and... Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So it's about a pound and a half, quite a long fish. Quite lean. Glad I made the effort and came out today, because... Yesterday I decided I wasn't coming because the forecast was so terrible. <clears throat> yeah, but I got up this morning, opened the curtains, the sun was actually out, shining. A wee bit windy at home. And it picked up before I got in the car quite appreciably and I thought, do I go? Do I not? What do I do? change my tune. Just flicked that out, turned the bloody camera off didn't I? Flicked it out, watched it up on the top and moved it and bang. Second cast. That is amazing. I actually saw on the first cast the fish came up and walloped it and I missed it. Then second cast having turned the camera back on came up and took it. So they're up in the water column they're not down deep. Right, okay, now I'm feeling like we know what's going on. I think this has taken on the, um, the, the, the first fish that I saw come up and take. 
took the point fly that I just put out, this black panel Danny Long Legs mixture, whatever it is. This looks like it's on my very top dropper, which would be um, the killer shrimp, the Grafham shrimp, but fished right up in the water. I think there's a whole group of fish out here. Very high up. Sorry about speaking on my hand, that was oh and he's off. thing is with these clouds they are moving through really quick so even if I get hit by one of them I don't think it'll be for too long. Yep, not good. Let's see if I can keep this one off. This looks a little bit oh no he's off. He was a big one. Jeez man. Some days I was here the other day had 15 fish all of them got to the net. I probably I did lose a few that day without a doubt. You have other days where everything comes off. There was no slack in my line at any point then, none at all. Okay. <clears throat> Been getting hits time after time and just couldn't get them to stick. Now this one's stuck. How long he stays stuck, I don't know, and it looks like he's on the apps, this one. I'm not gonna count my trout before they're hatched kind of thing, because I've lost so many, and that's just in the tip of the nose. You can see it already. Whoopsie oh, daisy, off he goes around the corner. Let's calm down a bit, sight. Let's calm down a bit lost so many it's like oh, nice to actually catch it oh, good okay not a big one but again that will do very nicely for my catch and cook it's my day done oh, i say day i've fished about five hours super super challenging blowy as hell i've got my two fish for my supper, so happy enough about that. Um, be back another day. So, end of the day, good day, hard day, really, really challenging. The wind has not let up at all. Uh, caught my two fish, uh, not big, but big enough that I can do a catch and cook later. Um, so I'll show you how I fillet them and uh, shallow fry them. Uh, it's a really nice method, it tastes really good actually. Like that. Um, and uh, I'll come back another day. Okay, so I've got two trout and I intend to fillet them. What I have definitely found works well, trout are the slipperiest fish I've ever dealt with. Get some paper towel, wipe all the slime off. Try to um, keep these still, and you do need to be able to keep them still when you're um, filleting them. It's flipping difficult and they are covered in slime. Took me a little while to twig that one. Um, I think it's probably safer as well for you personally because when you're filleting a fish, you've got a very sharp knife, you don't really want what you intend to fill it slip around too much okay so two trout um, got a cutting board filleting knife very important to have a filleting knife also very important it's super sharp they're nice and flexible um, you might be able to do it with a carving knife or something like that I've never tried um, but filleting knife invest in one of those just get that off cut under there then what I'm going to do is work along the backbone and making sure that you are the correct side of the backbone. So you want to be just over one side and then work your way down slowly, making sure not to slip because you do not want to cut yourself.
Okay, just so you get a better idea of what I've done there. I've cut along the backbone. You see on this side of the fin, I've started up here. And I'm just gonna basically run back and forth with the knife whilst peeling away. You will hit some bones, little thin ones coming out. I don't know if it, I don't, well, they're not ribs. I'm not sure what, what bone they actually are. You just need to work through those, cut through them. Again, you can see a little row of bones in here. I've cut through those. Okay, you can see them just sticking out of the fillet there. All right, and then I'm gonna carry on in the same manner. Then at, there comes a point where you can push the knife through and out here. So I'm gonna follow that through, push through, and then just press against the fish, press down quite hard. And then we're going to find the rib cage and we're going to work along the rib cage. Okay, so what, what that's given me, I've taken the fillet off there. I haven't gutted the fish, you don't need to gut it. That's given me one fillet, okay? I'm now gonna cut the other four off and I'll, I'll, I'll flick the camera back on when I've done that because I'll, I'll show you the next stage of what you're gonna do. We'll just show you as I finish this final one. What you're doing is you're cutting it from the top and you're folding it back and you're running your line along these ribs here and then the fillet comes away. Okay, okay. Now, probably the most satisfying bit of this is when you've got your fillet, there is a row of bones along here. So where my finger goes, there are some little pin bones and you can get pliers and pull them out. I choose not to, I choose to cut them out, which look, it does waste a lot of meat. And I'm sure anyone who knows how to fillet a fish properly would be having, 50 fits watching me at the moment. But what I also like to do is take the skin off. So starting at the tail end, get your filleting knife, push down. So get your fingernails holding the bit of skin. And the nice thing with a fillet knife is it lay, it, it's very flexible. I've gone back to another knife actually, the one I was using isn't as nice as this one. So I'm holding the, the blade tight down. Okay, so the blade is held tight against this. Got my fingers gripping that tight and I just work my way along and it comes off really easily. Okay, so that is the skin off. Some people like to eat the skin, so you wouldn't want to take that off. But the other thing that I do, which a lot of people are gonna say is very wasteful, I'm gonna lose quite a bit of my meat, but. I just cannot abide having bones in my um, fish. I'm going to basically find those pin bones, they're here, and I'm going to cut them out. Now on a small fillet like this, and it is a small fillet because it was a very small fish, it's only about a pound, I am losing quite a bit of my meat, I know that. Um, and if you have the patience or you don't mind eating bones, then either get a pair of tweezers, uh, pincers and take them out that way. Or do what I'm doing now. As you can see, I have lost quite a bit of meat there. <clears throat> but what is left is boneless. And what I tend to do is cut along there. Let's 
slice it that way. End up with four little fish fingers. And then when I coat them in my breadcrumbs, which I'm gonna do uh, when we do the, the cooking part of this catch and cook, um, you have these lovely little goujons. Okay, so I'm gonna do that now with all of these. This is a slightly bigger fish, so a nicer fillet. Um, I'll get more off this one. Again, start at the far end, get underneath the, the flesh and onto the skin, and then just holding the knife absolutely flat on your board, just work your way along the fillet. And this is where you really need a fillet knife, something that is really flexible. You can see that flexes. You won't get that with something uh, with most knives, most um, kitchen knives. Okay, we're going to do the cook part of this catch and cook. Uh, so I'm no chef, but this is just to give you an idea of how I prepare the uh, trout fillets, the goujons. Uh, works really well. So uh, I'll pop the camera down, uh, get all the ingredients out, and I'll show you what I do. Okay, so what I do. I've got my goujons, which I prepared yesterday. Um, these, you're going to want to make sure they're quite dry. So I'll put them on a paper towel. Just make sure they're nice and dry. And again, they may not look pretty, but they are boneless. So every mouthful, you're not wondering if you're going to get choked. So this will be enough for two people. So my wife and I are going to have this. And she has prepared um, some breadcrumbs. So what she's done, she's got oven cooked breadcrumbs. We've got those in a bag here. And you've also added cornstarch, paprika and black pepper. And salt? No. Right, corn, uh, corn flour, Paprika, black pepper, got that in a bag. So, what you need to do, take a single egg. You just want the white. You don't want the yellow, you just want the white. Don't need the yolk. I used to put the yolk in, but that actually flavors um, your batter. And we, we don't want the flavor of the egg. Okay, so we're just gonna go with that. That'll just nicely drop off. Did get a bit of yolk in there, but not much. Then we're going to add a little bit of full fat milk. I'm sure if you used half that or whatever, it wouldn't be a problem. Just going to whisk that up. Okay, so just whisk that up. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna take each of the goujons, gonna pop it into the milk and egg, drop it into the bag. This will just help take the breadcrumbs, <laughs> basically. I'm cooking some tomatoes at the moment with chilli olive oil and uh, the chilli does get in the back of your throat so you'll hear a bit of coughing and <coughs> spluttering maybe. Um, it's quite powerful but it does make, make the tomatoes taste particularly nice. So in any case I'm going to do all of my fillets. Everything else I've got cooking, I've got a jacket potato cooking at the moment, I've got peas cooking, I've got some tomatoes cooking. Um, you can do some mushrooms, well, whatever you fancy, but make sure the fish doesn't go on until everything else is almost ready. This fish will take about four minutes to cook. It's not going to take much longer than that. A couple of minutes aside, and we're there. So, just going to put the last lot in there. Zip lock bag it up. If it will close, I'll put some hands. Okay, <clears throat> so now, I'm just going to shake that about and let that take on as much of that as is possible. Okay. You don't have to put breadcrumbs on it, but we found it really nice and it makes for a really crispy finish. 
We're going to shallow fry these in olive oil. And again, I'm sure you can fry it in all sorts of different oils and cook it in butter and whatever. But if you have it in olive oil, so I've got my tomatoes in there. And with them, I've used hot chili oil in those. Lovely. But for the trout, we're just going to use olive oil. Uh, probably need a reasonable amount in there because you, you, when you put it in, the breadcrumbs are going to actually take some of that up. You want this quite hot. Uh, I'm going to put it on top heat to start with, bring it up to temperature. Uh, and then I will drop it down maybe one or two uh, levels. Okay, so on to the next bit, which is going to be cooking them. Cooking the fillets. Only do this when you've got absolutely everything else ready, because the one thing that we do know with fish, it loses its temperature very quickly. So really, one, once you've cooked this, you want to pop it on a plate, make sure your plate's warm, and be ready to eat it straight away. Okay, so I'll get the fillets in. Just make sure they're all in contact with the pan. Possibly could have left that a little bit longer just to get a bit hotter, but I'm going to give them a roundabout four minutes in total, um, probably a couple of minutes aside, and you'll find this will be well and truly done. Okay, so definitely flip these now. Nice crunchy surface on them. Lovely. The smell coming off this is gorgeous. You get a good idea what that's looking like. Really tasty. Found this, this uh, is really quite nice. Sainsbury's tartar sauce, yummy. When we've been to Florida, the, uh, the peas, we catch a lot of snapper, and this is where I first started doing this. I was watching uh, an American catch and cook and they were cooking snapper like this, so I thought, well, is there any reason that trout wouldn't taste good like this? And guess what? There is no reason why you wouldn't do it like that, because it looks good and tastes good. Okay, we've got our respective plates ready to go. My wife is a woman of simple tastes. That's why she married me. I thought I'd just get it out there before anyone else did. Mainly her. You can see, that makes for a really nice way to cook trout. The uh, peppered bread, the breadcrumbs give it a little bit of a zinc, a bit of a kick. Um, you could put all sorts into your mix. Um, like I say, it just coats the fish really nicely and it gives it this lovely crispy finish. And I'll just quickly break into that. I'll just do a little shot of it going in the old mug. Hmm, that's really good. Hopefully, you'll give it a go yourselves. Oh, it's hot. Okay, we're going to eat it now.